I am Sandra Payne. I'm sure you either know that or are <laughs> understand because you can see my name. I am the founder of Sandra Payne Wellness, uh, definitely one of the most creative names I've ever come up with. And um, also I have created the NurseRx uh, online coaching program and community. I also host the End the Silence podcast, which is showcasing real raw and very vulnerable stories of nurses just like just like those of you here or those of you listening to the recording and if you've been struggling with feeling burned out feeling emotionally overwhelmed exhausted as a nurse or even just thinking about how to navigate the intense moral distress that you might be feeling then you're in the right place I know that you're gonna find today's workshop valuable. Uh, today, I'm gonna to walk you through three keys to resolve your overwhelm and find clarity for moving forward in this profession. Now, don't get me wrong. There is a lot more involved in the whole process of overcoming the, the traumas of nursing, the moral distress, the burnout, as well as the symptoms of depression and shame and anxiety but we're somewhat obviously limited in what we can cover in 90 minutes. And I don't wanna overwhelm you even more by just throwing a whole bunch of information at you that like you're only gonna take in a such, uh, you know, a, only a fraction of what I'm gonna share. And what I really want to do is just hit kind of these, these highlights, these three keys that I believe, given my experience in my own journey, as well as working with many other nurses, are some of the most important. And if you want to fully dive into the transformational experience, um, then I invite you to stick around and I'm going to share more about um, the, the full experience towards the end. So like I said, we'll have some conversation and some time for questions at the end. So if anything does come up, please pop it in the chat. And I also would invite you at this point to answer this question in in the chat of you know what is one thing that you would like to get out of today what is maybe one thing that has led you here to this space today that has you know allowed you to create to prioritize the time and the space to be here to learn and to connect and to um, just take a glimpse into possibly a new way of of creating your life and i'm curious of like what you really would like to get out of this time together and if at the end if i feel like i haven't really hit on those things then then we can take some time to dig into things in a, in a different in a different way um, i also have a i have this powerpoint it's <laughs> i'm not seamless at presenting stuff this way, but so sometimes I forget, but I'll try to keep it moving so you don't have to just look at me. Um, yeah, so let's let's get in there. All right. Um, I know that today you're here because nursing just isn't what it once was. We are in many ways grieving what we believed nursing was going to open for us and are left with uncertainty and overwhelm, fear and confusion, sadness, grief, shame, and so much more. You've spent so much of your life, as I did also, invested in being a nurse, invested in this profession and what you thought it stood for when you got into it. It's become part of who you are, part of your identity, but you're also tired and you're tired of being unsupported and you're tired of being treated as if you don't matter. You're tired of being hung up to dry. You're tired of being unable to provide the care and the support to your patients that you know is needed. You're tired, I get it. And you also want to find a better way so that you can live your life in a better way, that you can feel happy and you can feel fulfilled and passionate and valued and balanced in your life. So today, my, my hope is that we're going to be talking about these things and so much more and answering, you know, some of the questions that are probably on your mind, such as like, how can I, oops, I went the wrong way. See, I told you I'm not very good at it. I try to be. <laughs> Come on, give me it. There we go. Did it go to the next one? There we go. Uh, such as, like, how can I manage the stress, the emotional overwhelm, and more, all of the things? How can I manage all of the, the stuff that's going on inside of me if things stay the same or they keep getting worse in healthcare and in nursing? How do I, how do I manage this? How much more can I take? How much longer can I hold this all together? How did I even get here? How much of my life have I missed out on? And where do I go from here? 
I don't know how to get unstuck from this. What do I do? Is leaving nursing the only option that allows me to find peace and to feel safe and supported and valued? I hope that we can find some answers to those questions today. And again, I am recording this live today. So go ahead and, you know, if something is resonating or something is coming up for you, use the chat box and I will I'll do my, I'm not great at monitoring everything. Um, probably at some point would, would um, like to have an assistant with that piece, but um, yeah. So just type your questions or anything that comes up in the chat box, share your experiences because really, um, you know, one of the most powerful things that I witness in the program that I run and in these workshops is when we share our experiences, when we have that authentic connection of you saying, you know, this is where I'm struggling. And then someone else pipes in and says like, oh my God, me too. It's like, you're speaking my language. I have this little bug that won't leave me alone. And when we share like that, when we, when we connect like that, it, it allows us to feel like we're not alone. And so that is that is an element of what we do here in this sort of bizarre, but now kind of normal online space. So use it to your advantage, share if you feel safe to do so and, um, and share with each other and support each other as I'm continuing through. I'm also going to take some time at the end to give you complete details of the NurseRx program and community for those of you that wanna learn more. So if that's something that you're interested in, we're going to cover all those details towards the end of the workshop. So before we dive in, I want to just take a moment to share with you a little of my story, because you might be wondering if you don't know me or you've never been here before in my spaces, um, why I'm here today talking to you about how we can find the ease and the joy and the freedom that we are really all looking for. I've been a nurse for 15 years uh, in a variety of areas, but mainly I, I started in the, the neonatal ICU and then I worked my way into community chronic disease. I struggled though, honestly, my whole career. My whole career I struggled with burnout. Well, I shouldn't say my whole career, probably into my third and fourth years when it really hit me. Um, but compassion fatigue, vicarious trauma, overwhelming emotions, and moral distress. However, actually during my career as a nurse, I had no idea. I had no language shared. Um, I had no language around this and no one talked about it. There was no open discussion about the realities of the mental and emotional impact that this job would have and could have. But because no one was talking about it, I just figured it was me. I figured I was a failure. I figured I wasn't cut out for this job. Instead of being supported, I lived with paralyzing shame, but no one knew, nobody knew because we're able to hide it, right? We're able to hide it, how we feel. We tuck it down, we stuff it down, we hide our truth, we hide our struggle, we power through, and the rest of our life tends to start falling apart because those are the safe spaces. When we're on as a nurse, you don't have a choice, right? You don't have a choice. And so we hide it. And also the, the thing about shame or this feeling that I'm not good enough or I wasn't cut out for this job. The thing about shame is that it likes to isolate you. It wants you to feel like you're the only one. It's a part of the emotion that it, that it creates this singular, I'm the, I'm the only one that feels this way. It must be me. It, it tells you that there's something wrong with you. And this I have learned, this shame is actually pervasive in the culture of nursing. Finally, this year um, of 2022, I officially let go of being a registered nurse. And in case you're wondering why, it's because really for the last number of years, I have felt myself become more and more misaligned with the healthcare system that I was working in, or rather, you know, maybe I should say the sick care system. Since 2015, I've really been on my own journey of healing and exploring alternative modalities and understanding the body from a holistic lens and, and the body's natural capacity to communicate and heal itself. And then to have to go back and work in this system that we have, it created so much internal stress and conflict because what I believed healthcare should look like and how I desired to deliver and support and care for people. And then what was actually happening in our system was so far apart. The reality of this sick care system, it created a massive moral conflict for me. 
and this internal conflict was tearing me apart. Witnessing and experiencing all that has happened over this last couple years has been the final straw for me. Moral integrity is a core value for me and something that I hold very close and one that I thought the nursing profession upheld also. But what we've witnessed unfold in our healthcare systems, particularly again over the last couple of years, has been anything but. And it's become so, so clear to me. The values that I hold personally and how I desire to serve and care and help others to heal are not aligned with what our current system is and what it allows and the people that run it. And so I chose to officially close the book on that chapter of my life. And even though it was so super clear for me what was right, it wasn't easy. I mean, this decision was not easy in any way. It was filled with grief and uncertainty and fear and worry and sadness and anger. But it also carried with it new threads of freedom and relief that I no longer was tied to any of that. I was able to fully step into this role, to my work as a wellness coach and the Nurse RX program that I run for nurses who are really struggling in a lot of the same ways that I did and that you might also be with that shame and that feeling of unworthiness or the feeling that I'm not good enough at this. Self-doubt, fear, worry, uncertainty, emotional overwhelm, depression, anxiety, and, and more. The nurses that I have had the utmost honor and privilege of coaching and working with, and some of them are here today, and connecting within the community has been the greatest gift of making that extremely difficult and scary choice of walking away from nursing, of choosing what was right for me. And the graduates of my program have revealed some of the most profound transformations, and I'm super excited to get to share a few of them with you here today. But before all of this, before I founded Sandra Payne Wellness, I was so stuck. I was showing up for work and doing my best to help people in really deep ways, but meeting nothing but obstacles every step of the way. You guys know what this is, right? No funding, no staffing, pulled funding, pulled resources, pulled staffing, no management, less time, less support, take, take, take. It was nothing but red tape in my way of providing the care to the people that I knew deep in my bones, I knew we needed to be providing for them. It was so clear to me that what we were doing wasn't really helping people to heal. It was prolonging their suffering in some ways and in some ways actually making it worse. And this made me absolutely sick inside. And the way that that manifested for me is I slept all the time. All the time I was, you know, it was a joke in my family, like, oh, well, mommy's always tired. Like, ha ha, not really funny because they didn't get it because I didn't talk about it. I slept all the time. I cried all the time. I mean, I still cry all the time. So I've, I've learned to embrace that piece, but I was irritable. I was jaded. I was miserable. I was so, oh, excuse me. That's funny. Here we go. We're just going to decline. Oh, this is how it goes. Where was I? I'm going to come back to that and I'll fix it in a minute. I was irritable and where I was, you know, I was so depressed and it seeped into all the corners of my personal life and gradually even began to affect how I showed up at work. And you know how I said, you know, I think you guys can all relate is like it, initially it starts to impact the other areas of our life because we don't allow it to impact our work. But when we start to see it seep into work, then it kind of tends to hit us in a way it tends to hit us in a way that wow this is this is really this is really getting bad so i i was checked out at work i i knew that <sighs> the only way i knew how to deal with what i was feeling was to not feel it that's what i've been taught my whole life just to push it down but that ultimately of course we know makes things significantly worse i was drinking a lot daily, way more than I should have been. I was unmotivated. Self-care was non-existent. I was distant from my family. I found myself dreaming of running away and I kept it all bottled up inside until one day that bottle broke. One day I ended my, my own silence and I shared the pain of what I was going through. And that day changed my entire life. I don't remember exactly what my brother said to me that day. But for the first time in a long time, 
I felt this immense relief. I felt heard. I felt validated. I felt seen. I felt accepted. I felt like it was going to be okay. There was this little glimmer of hope. And that day was a small moment in time. And in the, the, you know, the grand trajectory of my whole life, it was a small moment, but it allowed me to shift my direction by just one, one small degree. And it opened up this whole new path. I believe, I believe so strongly that when people come to events like this, when they show up for workshops, you know, whether it's mine or it's, you know, there's so many other people offering things out there, but when we feel this call and we step into a space and we do something different and we speak a little bit of truth, then it opens up something into, into, in our life, into a whole new world. It doesn't take, it doesn't take massive things to shift us. It can just be that one small degree of change. I started learning after that really, you know, I just, I mean, I dove in, I started learning more about myself, my mental health, my emotional health. I started learning so much about trauma and abuse and how that impacts us. I accessed numerous alternative healthcare providers, including multiple coaches over the years who have helped me to navigate myself in ways that I had never been taught or even considered. I realized that there is like this whole new world of healing and health out there that's not a part of our system. And it is what truly looks at people in holistic ways and helps them to find the root causes of their diseases and challenges and create lasting healing and change. And I discovered so much about myself and what I valued and it set the course for really what has unfolded since that day. What I discovered through my own journey of healing my mental health and creating a life that is aligned with my core values is that if you want to feel relief from the overwhelm and the burnout and the exhaustion, and if you want to find that freedom, that ease and joy and feel a sense of purpose and fulfillment, then these three pieces that I'm going to share with you today, I, I believe are critical. They are foundational and fundamental to finding that shift that you're looking for. These are the same three things that allowed me to go through the transitions and the transformation really that, that has happened for me to, to feel so much more confident and make empowered decisions in my life from a place of self love and self trust and creating a life that is balanced with passionate service work, helping and healing others, and then to go on and teach and guide others to do the same. Now, before we get into these three keys, um, let's just take a quick look at what is going on right now in nursing. Now, these, these stats even are, you know, they're not going to be a shock for you. They're kind of old actually. So they're before, <laughs> before things got really critical, uh, which they are right now. But as you look at them, because this isn't going to be necessarily new information, I want you to consider why, why are nurses burning out at such critical rates? Why are so many nurses leaving the profession? Why are nurses afraid to speak up? about the abuse and the injustice and the unsafe working conditions? Why are nurses treated with such disrespect and undervalued so much? Why are the rates of depression, anxiety, substance abuse, and suicide in nurses so much higher than the general public? I'm sure you have some answers for these questions. And again, I invite you to share what your thoughts are in the chat. Why are things the way they are? What do you see? This is a mental health crisis in nursing. We are in a critical state. And the reality is, is that our healthcare system is crumbling. It is absolutely falling apart. And nurses and the other healthcare professionals that are in there are the ones that are holding it together. But this is unsustainable. So what are you supposed to do? This is the reality that, that nurses are facing. Most are, are confused and overwhelmed and unable to find the right solutions, almost paralyzed, trapped, stuck in this vicious cycle on a sinking ship. In the work that I do, I get to connect with people every day who face these heavy issues. The nurses who are stuck on the ship and unsure of what to do or know what they want to do, but not sure how to do it or even if they can. And also I get to work with nurses who have already chosen to get off of the ship. They've already chosen. This is, I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm walking away. And there are also nurses that I get to work with who were tossed overboard over the last year, who were just tossed aside, 
thrown out of their profession. Every day I get to circle up with women nurses who are going through the same experience and knowing what I know now and having changed my own life to find more passion and excitement and that ease and flow that I talk about all the time, it's really become my personal mission to help them, to help you. Because I now know that there is a better way, that this storm, now you can't punch me for saying this, (laughs) is in fact an opportunity. It is in fact an opportunity for you and that's what I wanna share with you today. Before I dig into these three keys, I want to invite you to dose yourself with some honesty because honesty is really the first step to any path of change. Why? Because if we're not willing to look at ourselves, if we're not willing to own the truth of where we are at and take responsibility, then we can't really move past this part. If I'm in denial about how things are really going in my life, how am I ever going to create change? Honesty is a prerequisite to self-development, to growth and learning and exploration and healing. It's non-negotiable, meaning you can't skip it. If you do, the rest of it doesn't work. I'm just going to invite you all to make sure that you're, you're on mute. Um, Some of the noise, sometimes the noise can be distracting and I can't necessarily see. Oh wait, here we go. I can't see you there. Done. (laughs) Got it. (laughs) All right. I want you to, right now, as we're talking about this honesty piece, I want you to close your eyes. If it feels good for you, or you can just gaze down at the table in front of you. I want you to close your eyes. And just reflect inside on these questions. What areas of your life are creating stress or other heavy emotional experiences what parts of your life don't feel aligned for you what parts are not truly serving your highest health and well-being how are they making you feel how is it impacting your life in all the different ways is it affecting your relationships your family is it affecting your mood your sleep your self-care just holding that right now holding that truth taking some deep breaths honoring this you might even whisper words to yourself or say them mentally of just i care about this I care about this. This honesty, although it is quite difficult and uncomfortable, it's essential. It's essential for us to move forward. I can't create change until I acknowledge and I'm open and honest and willing to look at the areas of my life that require that change. And the same goes for you. You can take your time opening your eyes if you still have them closed. Now, as I move through these three keys, what I wanna encourage you to do is maybe take some notes if you like, but mostly just allow yourself to listen within and land on just one of these pieces that I'm gonna share, just one of them, one that really jumps out at you and that you feel you can create a commitment to spend some additional time with, to, to implement. So really just listen to yourself. If you're listening to one of the things I'm saying, you're like, I don't want to do that. That sounds ridiculous. That sounds stupid. I'm not going to, then don't pick that one. Pick one of the three that really jumps out as something that you feel a spark with, something that attracts you. Okay, so let's get in it. The first key is to reprioritize your life. Now, if we talk about like a burned out fire inside, we can't reignite that internal fire if we don't have any fuel to put on it. So how often do you prioritize your own needs? How often do you listen to the internal signals that are asking you for what you need? How often do you even ask yourself what you need? How often do you actually take the time to nourish yourself and give yourself what you need? Or are you constantly stuck putting others' needs above your own? This is not to shame you for these decisions, for where you're at. 
this again, this is that honesty that we need to confront and take responsibility. This is where I'm at in my life. I've given everything to everyone. Anybody else here? Give everything to everyone else and leave nothing or just scraps left for yourself? How are we supposed to show up every single day if we've just depleted everything that we have by giving it to everyone else? I'm not suggesting we don't give to other people. This is this so far from what I'm suggesting that we actually become better servants in life. We become better healers. We become better helpers. We become better moms and sisters and daughters and wives. And we become better in all the ways that we give when we give to ourselves. Now, I can't even tell you the amount of times and all the different work that I have done on myself, the amount of times I've heard the message of self-care when it comes to mental and emotional health. And I've heard it so many times I actually cringe at the word and I don't like saying it. I don't like saying it because I believe it comes with this sort of shame messaging, which is why I said what I just did. Because first of all, it's kind of insulting. insulting. We all know how important self-care is, right? We know this on a conscious basis, we know. But what does self-care actually mean to you? I remember in nursing school, right? It was, it was really talked about as caring for those basic needs, right? We were doing self-care for people. I don't think that even makes sense. <laughs> we're doing self-care for people. But it's actually so much more than that. Many people believe that it's like lavish, expensive things, having a, a me day where we go to the spa, we get a pedicure, a massage or a facial or something, you know, sort of like extraordinary. And although these things are lovely, don't get me wrong, they aren't reasonable as routine things or even weekly or monthly things for many of us. And although they do have the capacity to refuel us for sometimes a few hours, sometimes a few days if we're lucky, it doesn't last as long as we desire it to. So yes, basic self-care self is our basic needs and these lavish experiences, but it's also everything else in between. Everything else that fuels and fills us up, even the smallest amounts, it's all the little things that bring us joy and ease and presence and peace and connection and excitement. And it's choosing to nourish ourselves in small, meaningful ways every single day. That's self-care. It's asking yourself, what do I need today? And then giving it to yourself without the guilt and the shame. And that's really the secret to this first piece because the top reasons we're not prioritizing our needs is because of the guilt and shame. Other people need us. People are counting on us. We don't deserve it. We don't believe we are worthy of the care and nourishment that we need. Some kind of conditioned belief tells us that we're not worthy and we're supposed to give to everyone else everything. We're supposed to be selfless. Some frame of this story plays in most women's minds and it keeps us from prioritizing and fulfilling our needs. So I wanna introduce you to Leona. She is an absolutely treasured um, past client of mine. She and I met in November of 2020 and she was truly in a very dark place at that time. She was no stranger to burnout. This was really, you know, this was like her third round with it. She was struggling with big uh, feelings of depression, feelings of unworthiness and shame, self-loathing, and a lot of fear and a lot of pain. Leona was like many of us, and like I see a lot in the chat, you know, um, was about everyone else. She knew logically how important it was to care for herself and she even acknowledged and was honest that likely her suffering was because she wasn't looking after herself, but she found so much resistance to creating a lasting change with it. She was always giving and doing things for others and was stuck in this people pleasing pattern. She and I worked together both individually and she was also a part of the nurse RX group for over a year, actually I think closer to 18 months. And one of the most dramatic shifts came for her from reprioritizing her life. And so I want to share with you what she did every day. She would wake up and write in her book, one thing that she would do one thing that she would tick off of her to do list. Okay. This is just one thing. What she was doing in this was redefining the expectations that she held for herself because a part of this of not giving to ourselves is we have this huge list of things that we're supposed to do for everyone else or things that we feel we have to do, right? Or we should be doing. So she needed to, um, in addition to giving to herself, she needed to also redefine 
redefine the expectations that she held for herself. When we have a list of 20 things that we have to do and we set ourselves up for the day with doing them all because I have to do them all, right? That's what I'm supposed to do. I have to do everything. What happens when we fail or when we can't do it all? We don't think, well, that, that list was unreasonable. Like, I don't know where I was thinking that I could do all that. Maybe that might flash through our minds, but often what also comes with that is what's wrong with me? Why can't I get my shit together? Why can't I do it all? Other people are doing it all. There must be something wrong with me. That's shame. Some story of that plays in most women's minds. So Leona was redefining those expectations by writing just one thing as her goal for the day to ensure that she was continuing to cross things off her list because there's something really powerful about checking boxes or crossing things off and had her still caring for other people's needs, right? Because that list is all the things that we have to do for other people generally. And it was general life stuff too, right? And she would always end up doing more right? Of course, you're not going to just do the dishes. You're going to also wipe the counter and then you might even clean the stove. And then you might realize like, oh, I didn't do this and you get more done. But by redefining success for herself, she created motivation. Okay. So the second thing that she would write in her book was one thing that she was going to do for herself, just for her, not for the house, the kids, her spouse, for work, just for her. And she committed to herself to do that very thing. Every day she would write these things. And what she began to notice is how much less pressure she felt for the rest of the list. Because as I mentioned, she was redefining those expectations for the day, setting up a one thing a day goal. But she was also finding so much more energy and joy by doing one thing for herself, by filling her own cup. And that energy motivated her to do more. And if she allowed that one thing to slip, that one thing for her, she would notice in the next days how heavy everything else became. Because when we make a commitment to nourish ourselves and then we don't follow through, instead of reigniting that fire of joy and passion, we actually trigger that shame. We tell ourselves that we're not good enough, that we're not worthy of the nourishing that we need. And it does the opposite to that fire. It snuffs it out. Sometimes when things slip, we can beat ourselves up. This is, I know, Anybody else? I I mean, I know. And the heaviness of that can make everything so much worse. It doesn't motivate us to get back on track, which we're going to talk a little bit about in in the third key. It's it's, It's important to note that it's normal, that when we try new things, we might slip and get off track. It happens to us all. How many times have you started, you know, the the classic example is a diet or an exercise plan. How many times do we start and slip and get off track? It happens to us all. What matters most is how we respond when we catch ourselves slipping. And the more we do this work too, the quicker we catch ourselves, the quicker we're able to, you know, hit the reset button and notice when we slip into those old patterns, find grace and compassion for ourselves, check that self-talk and make sure that we're not beating ourselves up and shaming ourselves. This is where that community of support really, really helps. um, And it did help Leona a ton because when she would slip, she would then come to the space and she would vulnerably share. And the others would hold that space for her with just nothing but love, nothing but acceptance and nothing but support. And she would find that internal strength and hit the reset and realign, pull herself back into what she wants to do to move forward. Okay. So the first key is reprioritizing our lives and putting our needs at the top. So my invitation to you is to do just what Leona did and to help you get started with ideas of what to do for yourself. The first piece of this is really to start uh, a list, to write a list of everything that brings a spark of joy, a flicker of a smile, anything, anything that allows you to feel present, to feel ease and peace. Even the smallest things that come to your mind, I want you to write the list. You can do it right now. You can grab a piece of paper, a napkin, whatever. Write the list. At the top, I want you to write, I commit to nourishing myself daily. The bonus of this practice is that the more you start doing things for yourself, the more you start doing things just for you, you start to notice all the things you're already doing, but that you're actually missing out on. All the things that bring you joy that you don't pay any attention to because you got this dooming, glooming, looming list of things that you are supposed to be doing. 
And as you do more things for yourself, your list of things that bring you joy and that expand your heart will grow because you'll start to see your life in such a different lens. You'll start to see it with this heart open of gratitude and seeing all the abundance that you already have in your life. And your attention will start to naturally flow to those things instead of, oh shit, I didn't get the laundry done. I didn't do this. Oh, I forgot to call that person. You might still think of those things, but it won't be with this negative spin. You, where your attention goes, your, uh, is that the wrong thing? Where your attention goes, your energy flows. So the more we focus on doing things for ourselves, then it just naturally will start to become a, a routine thing for you. So the first key is hands down the greatest gift you can give yourself. It's a gift of your time, your attention and your energy. And I can't overemphasize how important it is to pay attention to your needs and to nourish them. We all have this desire to be the woman who can do it all, who can care for everyone and everything, but it's unrealistic to think that we can and that we can do it on our own. It's unrealistic and it's unsustainable. And so important for us to start shifting the expectations that we hold on ourselves, which also has an impact of quieting the negative mind. And I see someone saying that they're their own worst critic and that critical mind starts to quiet as we start to shift these expectations and making a commitment to fill our own cups by saying, I'm important too. What I need is important too. If we're not attending to our own needs, we won't have much left to give. And I'm sure you get this. You're all probably feeling some element of it right now. You matter. Your needs matter. But we can't expect others to always fulfill them. It's up to us. So start small. Start with small things that cost nothing and can take but a few minutes. And make the commitment, write the list, post the list, and watch how things shift for you. All right, let's talk about the second key. The second key is knowing where you stand. This is about knowing clearly what your values are, what are important to you in this life. It's about building a container for that internal fire to burn. As I mentioned in the beginning, I believe that the number one cause of burnout in nurses is not the short staffing or the, ma the management, but rather the moral distress and the injury that comes from not being supported to be able to care for and help our patients and fulfill our roles as nurses in these deep holistic ways that we desire to. We are continually having to sacrifice our values in order to fit into this ridiculously small, confined and restrictive box that they want us to fit into. I also believe that a part of why many of us maybe aren't aware of moral distress and moral injury is because we might not necessarily be clear on what our core values are. And this again is not anything to feel ashamed of because it's really, it's not taught, it's not necessarily talked about unless you go into some kind of program that invites you to. And it's also really difficult, it's difficult to find clarity on that. There's likely over a hundred values that us as human beings can hold but each has a different ranking on how important it is for us as individuals. So mine are gonna be different than yours. There might be overlap, but we are individuals. So what is important to us is going to be individual. Our core values really are the hills that we are willing to die on. Our core values will catapult us into action because it will feel deeply wrong to go against it. But sadly, in our profession, we are faced with countless situations that force us to do things that compromise our values and sometimes even those core values. And when we do so, when we compromise the part of what makes us who we are, we sacrifice that part of us and it is extremely painful on a deep mental, emotional and spiritual level. And it can be painful physically as well. The result that happens is moral injury that pushes us to have to disconnect from ourselves and our feelings in order to continue in this role. In order to continue to compromise and sacrifice what's important to us, we have to turn off what's going on, what's going on inside of us that's telling us this is wrong. But the more we do this, the more we disconnect from ourselves and our internal experience, the more difficult it all becomes. 
we start to experience extreme emotional overwhelm. Mental distress, anxiety, fear, depression, shame overtakes us and our body can respond with physical dis-ease. Our values make us who we are. They are not to be sacrificed, but rather to be lived by as our code, our compass in life. I wanna introduce you to Krista. She was one of the first clients I ever worked with as a coach. She was actually a, a relatively new nurse uh, within her first year, and she was miserable. The toxic culture, the bullying, it was eating her apart. It just wasn't what she had envisioned it was going to be like. And like many of us, she was grieving what she had dreamed nursing would be for her. Krista also had a very firm core value of autonomy and safety, and she was also an advocate for Vaccine Choice Canada. She was a part of research and information sharing about, about vaccines. And of course, this is an extremely hot topic these days. And when the threat to her core value of autonomy came to cross, she had a choice. As a nurse, she had a choice. And rather than her choosing to sacrifice her core value, she, choose, she chose to align with what felt true and right for her. People often wonder, how a person can make such a devastating choice with so much risk of persecution and loss. But what's extremely clear when I think of Krista was that by doing the work in the NurseRx program and on her own, there was no doubt for her what was right. And although that decision did come with a mountain of persecution, I mean, people have threatened her and her family. And it's come with a lot of loss. It also opened up a path for her that she is now so beautifully aligned with where she's able to live and work in accordance with her values and where she feels respected for her choices. And I wanna take a moment right now too, to acknowledge my, I'm, I'm not daft, I'm fully aware of how polarizing this particular topic has become in nursing profession. And I don't share this story without knowing that it might trigger some of you who are listening, who hold different beliefs than her. And if that's the case, I invite you just to be with that right now. Don't run from it, take some deep breaths, Feel your feet on the floor. Maybe stand up, shake your body, get a drink of water or something that helps you to just feel grounded and pulled back into a much more regulated space. But a part of me shares Chris's story because I want you to consider what would you do if something was pressuring you to sacrifice something that you held significant value in? Maybe one of your core beliefs is connection, that's for me, or family or adventure, or laughter, the list could go on. But imagine if something was threatening that core value, what would you do? Also, is it possible that more of us in the nursing profession also hold the core values of autonomy, and safety, and dignity, and trust? And given everything that has taken place, it's forced us into a position of sacrificing one or more of our core values. And it could possibly be contributing to this extremely high rates of burnout and attrition in the profession. I share this story because knowing our values is critical. It's critical for us as we attempt to understand why are we struggling and suffering in the ways that we are and the likely moral distress that's underlying. When we can understand our core values and make the choices to live by them, then we can bit by bit bring parts of our life into alignment. But finding that clarity can be difficult. And so here is my invitation to you. So this is, um, I invite you to kind of sit with this thought, right? I want you to ask yourself this question. What is important to me? Start by taking a few deep breaths, maybe placing your hand over your heart. And as you breathe, ask yourself, what is important to me? What is something that you would die for if someone tried to take it from you? If someone tried to ask you to sacrifice it? And continue breathing into your heart, asking this question. Every time you get distracted, coming back, asking the question again. And then, so if you're doing this right now, you might just grab a journal right now and write. Write what's come up, uncensored. Answer this question in your writing without thinking. Just allow these words and ideas to flow through you and onto the page. Just noticing everything that comes up. What is important to you? And so my invitation here is to repeat this practice 
Repeat it for five days. Don't read what you write. Just ask the questions, hold your heart, close your eyes and breathe, and then allow yourself maybe five minutes, maybe longer to write in your journal. And then after those five days, make some space to read it with an open mind and an open heart and just see what surfaces, see what's the common threads. This can be so helpful to help you zero in on what are your core values? What are the hills that you're willing to die, die on? What are the things that you would never sacrifice, that you would never sacrifice? This is the compass that is within you. This is so integral to who you are. I, I actually, you know, even though it's polarizing and a difficult conversation to bring to the table, I, I absolutely love sharing Krista's story because it really demonstrates how living a courageous life in alignment with your core values allows you to find the life that you're looking for, this life of, of alignment that is full of peace and joy and fulfillment. I mean, Krista and I are friends now too, and she, you know, she shares about her job and you know where she gets to work and all of the things that she gets to do that she felt were never gonna be possible for her. And I, I truly believe that when we work to create a life that is in alignment with what is important to us, with what lights us up, with what is just integral to us, then everything expands. Our whole life, everything that we want becomes available to us. And it also shows that living your life in alignment with what's important to you, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to quit being a nurse. She's still nursing. The antidote to moral distress and injury is not what nursing and our employers have offered. It's not a vacation. It's not a stress leave or a stress management or even a workshop like this. The antidote is actually courage. Courage to make decisions and to live by your own code of morals and values and ethics, no matter what that might look like or how much risk is involved. The courage to know where we stand and to bravely stand there, no matter what. Otherwise face the consequences that come when we sacrifice those parts of what make us who we are as human beings. So let's dig into that third key. The final one I'm gonna share with you today is about accepting and embracing yourself in all your shades and flavors. It's about owning who you are, where you're at, where you've been and where you wanna go. It's embracing all the mess or the muck as I call it. It's embracing the light, the good, the dark, the not so good and everything in between. It's owning and feeling all your emotions. It's putting the experience of shame to bed and seeing yourself as the incredible person that you are. Self-acceptance is about being okay with where you are right now and at all moments. It's loving ourselves right now, no matter what. It's about having compassion for ourselves and our struggles. It's being unapologetic and celebrating everything that makes you the most incredible, unique you. It's really about letting that internal fire roar without putting any limits on it. I want you to meet Jen. So we met at the tail end of 2021 and she was not in a good place. She was struggling with depression in all the worst ways. When she started working with me, she repeatedly said, I don't think nursing is the issue. I think it's all the other parts of my life. So she didn't think the program was going to be for her. And I reassured her that first of all, they all intertwine together. We can't have one area of our life going awry or struggling and not have it impact other areas. But that's how we work. We're dynamic and interconnected. That's what holistic health is all about. And secondly, I reassured her that NurseRx is actually not about nursing. I mean, nursing comes up. Let's be real. Of course it comes up. It's actually though more for women who are living with the symptoms of depression and anxiety, who feel lost and stuck in their lives, who feel hopeless and helpless, who feel disempowered and unsure of where to go next, who are screaming inside to be unleashed. It's for women who have been engulfed in this trance of shame and unworthiness, but have seen a glimmer of something more. And it's for women who are ready to dig deep. Those that are here that are in the program will tell you, we dig deep. Uh, there's a lot of honesty. There's a lot of emotions and we face those shadows. We face that difficulty and we get to find out just what more is out there for us. The fact that we're all nurses adds to the group. 
because we all get it. We all get exactly what it is to be a nurse, something that the general public, not even our families, can really understand. Being a nurse, however, though, is only one role that we play in our lives. It's not who we are. Nurse Rx is truly about remembering who we are and why we are here. So when I shared that with Jen, she was really reassured to hear that. And then as she experienced the group work and the program, she quickly realized that I wasn't lying. And she stuck with it for well over 18 months. I can't, I can't remember exactly. Um, one of the practices that truly allowed Jen to break free of the depression and the shame stories, the, the critical mind, the anxiety, and the trauma that she had experienced was self-celebration. Don't get me wrong, this woman, she prioritized herself and she set boundaries like a boss. She dug deep. She bravely faced herself and all of the difficult shadowy stuff that was inside. She gradually came to understand where she stands, what she needs, and prioritizing her needs. And she is living her life now, still as a nurse, with that compass in her heart. But learning to celebrate herself has allowed her to step out of those shadows of shame and depression. They're like the shovels that help us get out of the muck that we might be in and embrace all that makes us who we are to really glow and gleam in her light and in yours. Celebrating in community. When we celebrate ourselves in community, it takes that self-acceptance to the next level because it meant she got to own it all and also be held and accepted and feel true, authentic belonging without judgment, criticism, or anyone needing to fix her, which is not what we get for mental and emotional health care in our current system. It is not. And I actually, I dare to say that I believe this is what we need to really heal humanity, is more authentic connection and a feeling of authentic belonging. To be seen and heard and loved and accepted and to belong as our true selves without having to armor up, without having to put on a mask or be afraid. These are all basic human needs that we have to be seen and loved and accepted and belong. And they require us to have a safe place in order to drop that armor, a safe place so that we can trust and lean into these different practices. Celebrating ourselves is, is a very uncomfortable practice for many of us but it's actually the most effective way to rebuild true self-love and just self-ownership. And doing it in a community, it fulfills some of those other human needs. So how do we do this? How do we celebrate ourselves? Well, what we do is we practice the art of the brag. It is the simplest, but although not easy, way to start this in your own lives. And what I will encourage you to do is to start a practice of yourself with yourself. So in your journal, or if you have someone in your life that you love and trust every day, take a few moments to celebrate your wins for the day. My husband and I have this practice every evening when he's here, we share three wins. It's usually more like five. And then we talk about gratitude as well, but th at least three things that you want to celebrate. Some days you're going to have to dig deep on those heavy days that were full of stress and big, difficult emotions where you feel like you are in the weeds when you're in the muck, it is really hard to find things to celebrate and to feel grateful for, but it is all that much more critical for you on those days. We have this innate tendency, a negativity bias to see everything we didn't do, right? Remember that list? <laughs> we, we, we can't unsee that list. All the ways that we don't measure up to those expectations, we can become overwhelmed with, again, shame and guilt. Those are the days that you have to claw your way to those celebrations. But what happens is that you redirect your energy to celebration. You are able to shift out of that shame and victim perspective, and it allows you to see your life in such a different way. You see all the blessings so similar to what happens when we start to prioritize our needs and give to ourselves and fill our own cups. You start to see all the good things that are in your life. And so as a bonus practice to this is in addition to the three celebrations is to also add three things that you're grateful for. We can just even try it right now. So in the chat, I want you to share What's a celebration that you have for yourself? Start it out with, I brag. I brag. I got up at 7.30 this morning. That might not, might not be a big deal to some of you, but that's a big deal to me. I got up at 7.30. I brag. I sat outside in the sun for 10 minutes before this call. 
I brag, I did 15 minutes of breath work this morning and meditated. So share your brag, celebrate it. And then we, we support each other. And I love sharing Jen's story. And I, and I actually, when I share it and, and all of my clients, I'm filled with my own celebration and gratitude as I reflect on some of the most incredible transformations that I have been given the gift of witnessing over this time of doing this work. She is really, Jen is a beautiful example of what can happen for you if you commit and you do the uncomfortable work, when you're willing to look and be honest at the things that are really out of balance. Now today, I wanted to share with you these three keys for reigniting that burned out fire, but there's actually one more thing that really matters in creating the kind of freedom and peace and joy that, that I've mentioned Leona and Krista and Jen and many more have all achieved. And that actually happens to be personal support. I know many feel just as I did once upon a time that we can do this on our own. Uh, really though, in my own life, that was a toxic old belief pattern that I held around asking for help and feeling unworthy and like a failure. But the truth is that we are meant to thrive with each other. We all need help. We all need guidance and support on our journeys. In fact, that's a necessary part of how we evolve and grow. People come along on each of our paths to help us move to the next chapter to help us through the current lesson. There are no quick fix solutions. This is life and this is your journey in it. And I truly believe that we receive everything that we need when we need it. You may have asked for help, for support, maybe silently, maybe out loud, maybe screaming, maybe crying, maybe in prayer, or maybe it was that common thing that many of us say, like, there's gotta be a better way. I can't do this anymore. And I actually spend parts of every single day listening for those calls and listening to myself on how I can best answer them. This workshop today is a part of how I am answering your prayer. And that is what my role as a holistic wellness coach has really come to be about. Sure, I can give you loads of advice, suggestions, resources, tips, and I have lots. <laughs> and I have a ton of it all beautifully packaged up should you wish to receive those. But what really helps us to create the lasting shifts that we are aching for is the accountability, the personal support, and the authentic acceptance and belonging. And someone who is also trauma-informed and knows how to get to the root of the difficulties and the struggles that you're having. Because all the advice in the world, it doesn't amount to anything if there is something holding you back from acting on this advice. That's the work that I do. My focus as a coach is really to support you to unpack the heavy load that you're carrying, to navigate the stress, the emotional overwhelm, the trauma, the self-doubt, limiting beliefs that keep us stuck and imprisoned really in our own lives. I call this part sitting in and digging through the muck. It's not fun. I won't lie. People here can attest to that. It's not fun. It's messy and it's uncomfortable and sometimes really difficult and painful, but it's also incredibly worth it. Because when we allow ourselves the time and the space to move through this sludge that we've been dragging around, we get to feel lighter. We get to feel better, more energized and motivated, more clear, confident, and we can take back our power in every aspect of our lives. We can start to live our lives aligned with what's best for us, what serves us, what aligns for us and fills you up. We can live our lives empowered and true to ourselves. And this shift doesn't just impact your life, but the ripple affects everyone and everything around you. Now, we've covered a ton. So let's just take a breath and recap. And let yourself, again, like I said before, really land on one of the keys that resonates for you and that you feel inspired to take action with over the next few days. So the first one, again, reprioritizing your life. The action step was to create a pleasure list of all the things that fill you up. Post it somewhere where you can see it and commit to doing something that is just for you as many days as possible. The second was to take a few minutes to breathe with your eyes closed and asking yourself the question of what is important to me and just allow whatever comes to come and then take a few moments to journal and write what the question, what is important to me and just let whatever comes come and do that for five days and then read through and reflect and circle the things that are common or common themes that have come up. 
The third key is embracing yourself. And the action step is to write or share three celebrations every day to practice owning exactly where you're at and all that you do and celebrating it no matter what. Celebrating, you know, today I had a shower. Today I didn't have a shower. <laughs> Just own it all. This is a huge, hugely confronting and difficult practice, but it'll make a dramatic impact on your life. And of course, the fourth key that is absolutely essential of finding personal support, because that's what makes the transition from knowledge and understanding to action and momentum. So your next step from here is really to choose one of these and make a commitment to yourself. Any one of these steps is going to help you immensely as you move forward. And as you move forward, I kind of see there's two choices to finding a solution at this point. Um, I'd love to hear sort of, um, you know, if there's one thing that you that is resonating, one thing that you're feeling like you can make a commitment to, you can pop that into the chat and share with us. But I kind of see like, you know, there's two choices. Your first choice is really to go at it alone, piece it all together on your own. You can take all your notes from today's event. You can start trying to piece it all, piece these three keys together so that you have what you need to find all those things, the balance, the peace, passion, fulfillment that you're looking for. And this is truly a valid approach. Don't get me wrong. And it's one I took many times on my own journey. And the keys I shared with you today can really help you. But there are some challenges when you take this path. Namely, it takes a long time and takes a lot of resources. And as I said, is this is what I chose many times, mainly because of that extreme independence pattern that I later learned was in fact a trauma response rooted in fear of asking for help, fear of um, or not believing that I was deserving of any help and support. And I, I know that this journey can be done on your own, but I don't recommend it. You'll waste a lot of time and energy and the process moves painfully slow. And there is also many opportunities and roadblocks um, to pull you out, which means that there is a lot of um, things that will come up in this journey that will create an opportunity for you to quit. You can do this on, on your own, but trust me that it is a lot harder and it's lonely. But if you're someone who wants to really dig in and create lasting transformation, and do it with a community of support, then your second option is to take this journey with support. And if this appeals to you, then I'm just gonna invite you to stick it out here. And I'm gonna dig into um, the Nurse RX program and the community and share with you exactly how I can help you do just that. Okay, so let's talk about exactly what's involved and included in Nurse RX. So if, if you're not interested in this at all, you can feel free to bow out. You can just say in the chat, you know, I'm, I'm I'm heading out, thanks, whatever, <laughs> or no thanks, uh, whatever you feel like sharing, but um, we're gonna dig into the program right now. So if you're interested, stick around um, and we'll get all your questions answered. So I see the Nurse RX is having four foundational pillars that we kind of flow within and between over the 12 weeks, um, the initial 12 weeks together in community. And so, and, and as well within the online program, which I'll sort of explain the difference between the two in a moment. So pillar number one is called release. And so this phase is really about letting it go, all the buildup of heavy emotions, heavy energy inside of you from living, you know, possibly years with these unreasonable, overwhelming expectations, expectations and these traumatic experiences that we've had. It's palpable and it's honestly standing in your way of moving towards everything that you desire in your life. My mom used to say to me my whole life, um, I mean, I get it now. I'm not blaming her. I totally understand where it was coming from. She was just trying to please the whole situation and avoid any kind of conflict. But she used to always say to me, build a bridge and get over it. Anytime I was upset, anytime I had emotions, anytime anything was just um, outside of, you know, the box that they wanted me to be in. And what I've realized is that we can't, we can't just build a bridge over this mucky mess. We got to tunnel our way through it. And this is a part of what we do in the program. We're letting go of old beliefs and limitations and pain and fear and hurt and anger and shame and self-doubt. And we're clearing the way to make space for the freedom that we're seeking. And it allows an openness to adopt a different mindset towards life and its challenges to really find true freedom. The pillar number two is called reignite. So once we are free within, we can really allow ourselves to rekindle the passion and the desires that are burning inside of us. Why do we choose this, choose this path in life? What do we want our life to look like? What's our dream? What's really important to us? What obstacles are in our way? 
reigniting our fire inside and breaking through the blocks, it allows us to direct our energy and our action towards what I call our yes life. So pillar number three is reconnect. No matter how lost and stuck you might feel, deep down, the true you is still in there. And she always will be. The truth of who we are and the wisdom and answers we are seeking in our life are held within us. When we take time to be still and quiet, when we take time to connect with others, we can find this inner knowing. The trouble here is we're often too busy to listen, or the truth is too scary for our ego and those parts of us that are really wounded. And so we hide from it, from it or we bury it deep down. We push it down. We might hide from it with food or booze or something else, shopping, social media, Netflix. I mean, there's lots of ways we can hide these days for sure. Learning to reconnect with our inner landscape will offer you unparalleled freedom and it will unleash the truth of who you are and the gifts that you are truly here to shine on the world. Pillar number four is rebuild. Self-love and self-trust are a necessary part of living your life full of all of these, all of these things that we want, all of those beautiful words that I have already said so many times. Really cultivating this complete unconditional acceptance of yourself is essential if you ever want to make your way out of the muck you're stuck in. Self-love is also about forgiveness, healing our wounded hearts, putting ourselves on the priority list, setting boundaries. No longer can we just leave scraps for ourselves. We need to choose to treat ourselves with the respect and compassion that we so generously and selflessly give to others every single day. Within these four pillars, you will also receive lifetime access to the entire NurseRx online program. So I know that's tiny writing up there. You can feel free to screenshot it if you want to look at it, or I'm going to give you a link and um, you can see it in big form. So um, <clears throat> in the Nurse RX online program and library, there are 12 modules that are just absolutely loaded um, with deep self-exploration exercises and practices that will have you flowing through these different elements on your own timeline. So this way you can really take your time to explore the videos and the resources that are available within the online pro, uh, platform and be supported in the NurseRx community. Each module of the program builds upon the previous as you initially spend time, as I say, like digging through your muck, moving through the stuck energy of stress and emotions so that you can find clarity as you progress to rebuilding the empowered foundation that you were really designed to live from. <clears throat> Excuse me. In addition to ac accessing the online program, which includes everything that we've already talked about today and so much more, you also get access to the personal support and community, which then allows you to step into momentum with your individual growth and change. So for 12 weeks or three months ish, you will have access to this beautiful and expanding community of women nurses who get it who are all moving towards their own goals with their own unique challenges, but that also hold the common threads of our human connection so that together we are all learning and growing. Within those 12 weeks, you have 24 uh, opportunities to join the community to receive personalized support from me and the group and create individualized action plans to move you towards your own unique goals. You can explore deep connection with yourself, uncovering who you are and what you truly want, dismantling these internal blocks in your life and creating massive momentum. In those group sessions, you will also listen to others' challenges and watch them take action. We create a safe container so that we can all share vulnerably with complete acceptance, without judgment, and just hold space of support for each of us and ourselves who are struggling and suffering in, in our own ways and can then each of us experience the magic and the power of authentic connection, of that true belonging and unconditional acceptance of all parts that you bring. So not only do you get access to the full online program, <clears throat> 12 weeks of access to the community, um, but there's also some bonuses. So you also, um, once a month we have a guest expert speaker. Um, this is going to shift. It might not always be a live speaker. It might be a recorded um, guest expert from a past um, speaker. And but this just complements where where we're going in the program. It offers a different perspective, a different exercise, and gets us digging through even more. Um, so a really powerful uh, addition. As well in the course, there is um, a weekly recorded Kundalini yoga practice. And so Kundalini yoga is. 
uh, different than a traditional sort of like vinyasa or flow type of yoga. Um, Kundalini is about accessing the energy centers of our body and unlocking the stuck energy and emotions that we are holding inside. And so you can, you can Google it. I don't really recommend that because there's lots of stuff that doesn't really make it look all that great. But if you want, you, there's lots of um, trial classes that you can um, do online. And, but really it complements the content and the exercises that are happening in that particular module. So if you're talking about um, self-love and self-trust, there's going to be a Kundalini practice that is about heart opening. So it's going to be a lot of movement and exercise using the chest, using getting our heart pumping, using our arms so that we can really open and expand into this heart chakra. Um, there's also numerous uh, recorded guided meditations that go, again, in complementary to that particular module that, uh, that you're working through. Um, we also have a private Telegram thread that, uh, if you're not on Telegram, that's fine. It's a free app. Uh, it's just like kind of Facebook Messenger, but it's off of Facebook. And it's a, a more secure uh, platform, so what they tell me anyways. And um, so this Telegram thread is really for us to connect even outside of the calls. So a lot of times we're sharing, you know, lots of people share, you know, really positive, uplifting memes, or, you know, they'll share about what they did that day. They'll celebrate themselves. There's lots of brags, but people will also share if, you know, things are kind of going rotten and they, you know, they could use somebody just, just to lift them up a little bit. Um, it becomes another space for us to connect and to support outside of the, the live calls. I really have, um, over the last two years, uh, I have dedicated my time and my energy and my heart to creating this program and facilitating the community of nurses who I, I get the honor of facilitating every week and who are really truly bravely stepping up for themselves and their lives. And it's, it, it is absolutely my deepest honor to do this work. And I know we have covered a lot. I have talked a lot. My throat is way dry. <laughs> so let's just take a deep breath together. <sighs> and let it go. And what comes to my mind actually right now is how, you know, I wish I would have had this type of support and resources when I was a nurse. Because as I shared in the beginning, I, I struggled in silence because I didn't know where to turn and I felt like I was the only one and I felt a lot of shame and stigma around how I was, how I was feeling, all this like intense emotions and my inability to disconnect from it all, my inability to just let it go. I want this to end. I want every single nurse, I want every single healthcare provider to know that there is support out there, that there is help, that they don't have to struggle in silence the way that I did. And this truly is my mission. I want nurses to know they're not alone, that you are worthy and you deserve so much better than what you're receiving and what you're going through. And I know that this is going to be so powerfully helpful for those of you who are ready to take action and I'm excited to invite you into our space. Yeah, how do we get to participate in this program? Um, so I'm going to just actually share one little brief bit, and then I'm going to turn the, the um, recording off so that we can have a conversation if anybody has questions. Um, I want to share a little bit about the cost. And so um, I'm going to actually pull up this screen that I will give you the link to and you can open it on your own screen if you like. Okay, so there you can click on that if you want. You can and it'll open up. It won't take you out of the call and then you can have it for when you want to look at it after. Um, I'm just going to click here and go down. So I have uh, recently been invited um, on my own personal journey of <laughs> this roller coaster of life to shift how I am um, doing business. So this has been a, a sort of a long thing coming and um, it has confronted me in all the deepest ways possible. And I am still navigating it and moving through it and figuring out how it's gonna work. But when I talk about the investment for this initial, um, this initial offering, so the 12 weeks, the online program, you can do the online program and never attend a call if that's what you want, um, or you have access for the three months. And I am inviting you to determine uh, what that value is for you. And that might be confusing for some people. I know it was when it was first introduced to me. I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> how do I determine this? How do I, 
how do I know what is the right amount? And so the right amount is really what feels clean and fair and honest for you and something that respects your financial means. Part of my intention behind this is I want to eliminate any barriers for people. The number one reason over these last three years that I've been coaching that people have said they couldn't participate is because of finances. And I don't want that to be the case. I truly believe that what we have in the nurse rx space if you if i lay it out clearly for you and tell you exactly what it is that it we are digging deep that there is a lot of brave beautiful honesty a lot of emotions and we talk about some very difficult things if you are ready for that if you are ready to step into that kind of space that offers you an opportunity to create lasting transformation to shift your life into what it is that you truly want then I don't want there to be any barrier. So I invite you to determine um, what that looks like for you. And you'll notice there's a video here. Um, you, I, I really would encourage you to watch it. Also it just um, offers you some additional context if you're feeling confused about this. But a part of my purpose doing this also is to empower you, for you to say, I am, I am worthy of this. I'm worthy of the time and the space and the commitment, and I'm worthy of also investing in myself financially. But I also want you to know that even if the amount that you're able to give is zero, that you will still have access to everything that I'm talking about. There is no limit. There is no like, oh, you only paid this much, so you only get this. That's not how this works. So this is a learning process for me. Um, it is a healing process for me, and I'm actually really grateful for you all um, to step into this with me and, um, and help me learn and help yourselves grow along with it. Because when I have, um, so this was not, this didn't come from me. I was introduced to it by a man named Charles Eisenstein. Um, and some of you may be familiar with him. He's a writer and a speaker. He has some really beautiful books. One I really highly recommend, um, <laughs> put it on the list, Jody. Um, the More Beautiful World We All Believe Possible. And um, he does all of his work in this gift economy. And so he introduced it to me and he gifted me his program. Um, since then I have been gifted other things that have led me in this direction. And so this is my actually makes me quite emotional because this is my attempt at stepping into a whole new paradigm and offering everything that I have always offered in a way that makes you feel empowered 